This is One on One. Today we all met to pack stuff for the troops. All the stuff that would, will make our soldiers, sailors, marine, and airmen feel like there's some love from America. And uh, the folks from Lane Furniture and Rockwell Automation, Unilever, Menasha, Adopt a Soldier Platoon, Blue Star Moms, all came together. Well, we've been doing this for over 11 years. We're all volunteers, nobody takes a penny, nobody takes a salary, nobody gets any special privileges. And so that's what we do. We support sailors, soldiers, Marines, and airmen uh, in harm's way. So wherever our guys are, uh, we support them. That's some great video from an organization called Adopt a Soldier uh, Platoon Organization. And the uh, co-founders are here right now, Alan and Mary Edna Kretschkoff. And uh, you co-founded this organization. A great organization. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank and uh, the, by the way, the story behind, <laughs> you're laughing already. Yes. Uh, by, the way, the, the, by the way, the website will be up throughout this entire program. The story behind how you created this is amazing. So you were working at Unilever at the time. Correct. You were doing what? I was a school nurse at a small school in uh, Ridgefield, New Jersey. Okay, so you're in a parking lot. Yeah, my car was parked where it was every day. Okay, what happened? The school custodian um, smashed into it one day on her way out to do an errand. And I called Alan at work, and I said, my car got hit. And he, how could she not see your car? And I said, she has a lot on her mind. And he's like, well, you know, over $500 worth of damage. What could be on her mind? And I said, her son-in-law was just, had just been deployed to Iraq. He was in the 82nd Airborne. This was April of 2003. We had just started our uh, combat missions over there. And he went back to his buddy at work and decided to go shopping at the company store and buy him some things and send well, them to back him. Up. Your car gets hit. Yes. You, you, you're not worried about the car. You're okay. And you say, hey, wait a minute. This woman had a son-in-law right. who was in Afghanistan, just deployed, and you think... Actually, right Iraq. Away, Actually, Iraq. Iraq. Yes, yes. And, and you think, I'm at Unilever. They have great products. And you immediately think, maybe you need something. Right. Well, I was first... <laughs> I was angry at first, but then when she told me that it was uh, because her son-in-law was going to Iraq, I said, oh. So my anger turned to empathy. I went to a buddy of mine, Holmes Brady, and I said, Holmes, let's adopt this kid. He's a sergeant in the 82nd Airborne. Turns out that Holmes' dad was in the 82nd Airborne in World War II. Wow. So there was a, a connection there. And uh, What did you put together? We, just we bought some personal care products and snacks and food and Skippy peanut butter and stuff like that and shipped it over there. That was probably the first box. And so that's the first box. What happens with the, uh, your colleagues at Unilever? What do they do? They hear about it. Uh, and then we had some colleagues that had loved ones overseas. So my nephew, my cousin, my son. Um, we had, after about three or four months, we had four adoptees, the first one from the 82nd Airborne, and then three Marines. And uh, we, were the, we had about 25, 30 people that I would hit up for 20, 25 bucks a whack. Say, hey, come on, we got to buy some stuff. So I said, hey, we're the size of a small platoon. Let's call ourselves the Adopt a Soldier Platoon. And that's how the name was born. That's how the organization was born. And never thinking that we would get to be no. nationally recognized 501c3, you know, charity. Just, we were just trying to do something nice for somebody. And, and it. How big is it now? Well, our revenue is about uh, half a million a year. We're still small. I would say small to mid size. So we're about a half a million a year. Our program ratio uh, in 2013 was 94.8 cents. Make that clear to people. What does that mean? That means that 94.8 cents out of every dollar we receive goes where it's supposed to go. We're all volunteers. We don't, no yeah. one takes a salary. We don't spend money on a lot of, you know, we don't do any advertising or a lot of promotions. We do have a website. We have a Facebook page. Uh, it's Which most, I run for nothing. Mostly word of mouth. He does website. it, yeah. the, Jan, the website's up throughout the entire segment, right? Let's put it up, okay. So the website's up. Yes. So as the website is up, what can people do right now when they go on the website? Well, they can, there's a navigation bar on the left. They can go where it says donate. Um, we're licensed, of course, in the state of New Jersey to solicit donations. We're uh, New Jersey tax exempt. And they can go to donate and send us money. And if they have a specific place they want to put it, like if they want to put it to wounded heroes, they can put Operation Combat Care. And in Operation Combat Care, 100% 
of every dollar goes to our wounded heroes. Amazing. 100%. And there's so much to see on the website. There's videos and testimonials and there's pictures and there's packing lists of things to, to, that you could buy. There's hints on how to pack if people are interested, if there's organizations out there, community organizations or school organizations that would like to take on a project. Um, there's, there's all sorts of advice on there and they can But you're reach raising out. a lot of money. In fact, we, we, we came to know about you through uh, some mutual friends. Um, our good friends Joe and Barry Murillo and uh, our good friend Vito, they, they own Nanina's in the Park. Mm -hmm. Correct. And they held yes. a fundraiser, right? Yes. This fundraiser was back in October of 2014. That was, that was the second one. We've had two Salute to American Heroes at Nanina's. They're wonderful, generous, patriotic, compassionate people. Just fantastic. You raised a few bucks there. The first year we raised a little over 100, <laughs> and this past year we raised over 125,000. All of which goes to our wounded heroes. And it's the folks wonderful. at Nanina's, they let you have the place and you know the food and everything else yes. they donate so it they they give us a ridiculous deal right uh, with and fabulous food and fabulous the food is uh, amazing you know, and, 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 and a beautiful setting plus they donate money also and give us money yeah so you know and by the way as we continue to have the website up people can find a way to be helpful um, the wounded veterans yes. who come back what do you do for them well, uh, we do have a whole area now that 100% of that goes to, and I've been a nurse for 43 years, so now my area of responsibility is to, as people fill out an application, which is online, they can also see the application for a grant, and we will see what their needs are, and we will try to fulfill many different types of needs. We'll review them, we have a small committee, we'll look at them and see what, what we have fund-wise that we can help. We can't give necessarily money, but we've bought a, a riding mower for someone who was a, a triple amputee to help him with his lawn. We've got, we've purchased vehicles. Um, you know, we just recently offered to pay for airline tickets for someone who was going back home to see a family he hadn't seen in, in 12 years since one of his parents died tragically. So I said to him, that's part of your healing, that's part of your ongoing process, we want to keep our guys safe. They've done so much to keep us safe here that we're trying to keep them safe once they get out and fall into potential tough dis situations. You know, the other part of this is morale. Yes. There are three prongs. What are the three prongs of the organization? The care packages downrange, the wounded heroes, and the morale, welfare, recreation, or what we call MWR events, where we actually go to Afghanistan, go to Kuwait. We've been on uh, aircraft carriers, been at bases. And How do you build morale? just by being there and showing that you know they're not forgotten and that America cares about them. We've partnered with the Washington Redskins cheerleaders. There's nothing more American than football. We're and looking at them right now. Oh, there they are. They've got the and cheerleaders to go from the Washington Redskins. Yes. Why yes. would they do that? Why would they? Because that's part of their culture. To be a Washington Redskins cheerleader, you have to be very patriotic. You have to be very charitable in you your, have to in your giving. You have to love the troops, yes. If you don't love the troops, you'll never be a Washington Redskins cheerleader. And most of these young women, in addition to being fabulous dancers and in wonderful shape, are family-oriented. Many of them are teachers. We've, they've got attorneys. Uh, one has her PhD in some sort of biomedical mm. engineering. They're wonderful, wonderful people. And what happens when they get there? How do they help? Ah, wonderful. Well, they'll split up. We'll go into a, a DFAC, which is a dining room facility and we'll bring maybe anywhere from eight to ten cheerleaders and they'll pair up into twos and they'll sit down with the guys in the dining rooms while they eat breakfast, while they eat lunch, while they eat dinner, talk to them, uh, share experiences with them, uh, pose for pictures, autograph, Facebook. Wow. Um, and they have a show, an incredibly wonderful show and this last January, this jacket I'm wearing has all the patches from our trip in January. So this last January we actually brought uh, a retired Raleigh, North Carolina um, fire chief who is called America's Elvis, an incredible uh, Elvis impersonator. So he was part of the show. They do a variety show. And we went to four different commands in Afghanistan and did this show. And the feedback you're getting, what's interesting is that um, you're getting a lot of feedback in terms of the, uh, the impact that you're having. The uh, United States Department of the Navy. Yes wrote to you, um, Jackie, if we could, put up the graphic. This is from the United States Department of the Navy. I'm going to read it. Uh, this comes from a top-level official. The care package from your organization were given to some of the bravest commission officers and enlisted personnel in the United States Navy. They were, were enjoyed by everyone and boosted the spirits of my uh, squadron during a lengthy combat deployment aboard the USS Carl Vinson. Vincent. Vincent, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, 
on behalf of everyone assigned to the Fighting Redcocks of Strike Fighter Squadron 22, please extend our most heartfelt thanks to your volunteers for their generosity and caring. And thank you again for your support while we are on deployment. Now let me say, Steve, that the Carl Vinson is in the Arabian Gulf or somewhere in the Middle East. Don't know exactly where. Well, tell it is. everyone what the Carl Vinson is. It's a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, a fleet ship of the American Navy. How at risk are those folks? The, right now, they're very at right. risk. That's right. And they're fighting ISIS. So, when we 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 sent over the holidays, I believe we sent about 300 packages to the Carl Vinson. So we sent packages to the ship's command master chief and he distributes it to all 18 departments aboard the ship. And we also sent packages to the command master chief from the carrier air wing. So all the air squadrons, all eight air squadrons on board ship got maybe 50 packages that they shared. Right. And so these guys are, are flying missions over Iraq, northern Syria, you know, protecting the Kurds and protecting our allies and right. protecting American interests. Before I let you out of here. Uh, we've been asking lots of different people uh, who are making a big difference in all walks of life about the question of leadership, and you are clearly leaders in your own right. The most important lesson you've learned about being a leader, right? Because no one forced you to do what you've done. You just happened to get in that little fender bender, right? right. Anyone can start and help people. We started with two, three people. Now we're 600 strong, core of maybe 36 volunteers. But anybody can do it. Don't just put magnets on your car. Go out and make a difference. Uh, I think the best thing about leadership is you lead by, by example, by doing it, by being right there in the trenches with everybody. There's nothing about us that says we're you know, running this organization. We're, we're doing it every day, and I think that's that's the way we get people excited because we're excited about it too. What's the greatest satisfaction you get out of this? Um, how much my life has been enriched by meeting most incredible folks across this nation, folks that have been through things I could not even imagine anticipating or dealing with, and yet we are helping them deal with it. They are helping us live our lives better because we're seeing how they experience dealing with it. You know, limbs and things like that gone and normal abilities to do things that we, that we take for granted, and yet they're still, they're still hanging in there and caring, and caring about this nation. And you served our country as well. Yes, I did, United States Air Force. How proud are you of our men and women? They're the greatest people on Earth. Listen, people have uh, seen the website for Adopt a Soldier Platoon organization throughout this uh, segment, and we hope uh, they respond, and we cannot thank you enough for everything you do. Um, if I can mention, Go ahead. Um, on July 4th, we have the Warfighters Independence Weekend. It started by uh, 10th Mountain Soldier. And if anyone is interested in helping us, we're going to provide hotels, expenses, travel, catering for two days for all these warfighters so that they can get together, share experiences. If we can save one life, keep one soldier from committing suicide and killing himself, We'll have done something really great. And everybody out there can help. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Virtua, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, County College of Morris, PNC Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chess Challenge. And by Steve and Elaine Pazicki. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.